sometimes we just need a little bit of a break from counting and recounting numbers. Sometimes we just need a little break. Enter patterns. Patterns are such a fun unit to teach. It's so different than straight counting and numbers. And I also find it's really accessible to most students because it's so visual. So they don't have, so if your students don't have a ton of background knowledge with numbers, they can still participate, but still learn about patterns and access that information very, very easily. So why is that even important? Patterns may seem like an isolated skill, but patterns are everywhere. And it's really laying a foundation for eventually understanding the patterns in our number system or their number sequence. It'll help them as they get older and really does end up supporting building their number sense in a way that they might not even realize. How do you introduce patterns? How do you teach patterns? When I'm setting up any math block for any unit, I really like to start off with a warm-up. So the warm-up that I use for patterns is a question, what does this pattern belong to? So it's just a very zoomed in picture of a pattern that is found in nature and the kids try to figure out what that pattern belongs to. It's something the kids really enjoy, they really like guessing, and it really kind of exposes them to the concept that patterns are everywhere in everyday life, in nature, everywhere. And it gives the learning of the concept of patterns value beyond just like, oh, this, one, this, uh, this other thing that my teacher wants me to learn about. So next comes the mini lesson. So I will start the mini lesson with a pattern presented and I'll ask the kids what they notice about the whatever I've presented. And so some students will tell me the color, some kids will be like, oh, that's a pattern. And if a kid tells me that it's a pattern, I'll ask them to explain like in their words, what is a pattern? And they'll usually tell me something like, oh, it's something that repeats. So then I explain what repeat means if we're not sure about it and finish off that pattern together. Then I'll show them another pattern, possibly just the pattern completed, or I'll show myself making a pattern with cubes or something like that. And then I'll have the kids make the same exact pattern that I did, same colors and everything. Because right now we're just practicing like making the pattern, not necessarily transferring any of those, transferring that pattern with other colors. And at that time, I'll, I'll circulate around the room, see if I can find anybody, if I can support kids who might need it, or if I see anybody's like doing a good job, like get ready, come back to the circle and share what we've done, share our work. And after the mini lesson, we'll move right into our station time. So when I'm just starting to teach about patterns, I usually try to go with like patterning mats that already have a completed pattern on and the kids are really just matching the colors or the shapes to start to get them used to creating patterns. The one thing I will say is that you want to keep an eye on kids who for example, if the pattern was red, blue, red, blue, they might just put a red on all of the reds and then a blue on all of the blues. And the thing you want to be wary of is if they understand that a pattern is supposed to repeat and that's why they're skipping or they're just straight matching. And if they're just straight matching, they might need a little bit of extra support to understand that when you're creating a pattern, you wouldn't necessarily create it that way for as we move on in the pattern unit. And then the next day, have the kids transfer a pattern. So make a pattern with two colors, but they don't have to be my two colors to see if they can transfer that AB pattern without necessarily labeling it at this point or labeling it briefly like, oh, this is an AB pattern. It's called that because it has two colors, so on and so forth, and see if they can start to transfer that pattern or make a different AB pattern on their own. And that kind of tells me if they're picking it up or if we need to review a little bit more. And again, a different kind of patterning mat for our patterning centers with the warm-up being the same throughout because my kids really like it. Then as we move on with our teaching, we might move on to an AAB pattern or an ABC pattern. There's lots of different pattern types you can go into. It really depends on the length of your unit and how quick your kids are picking them up. And though, even though I might not explicitly teach every single pattern type, the pattern stems that they're getting or the patterning mats that they're getting do have a lot of different kinds of patterns on them so they can start to see that patterns don't just have to be two colors they could be three they could be four they can repeat they can do double of one color um etc as far as our math centers go like i said i start with just recreating patterns and then move on to extending patterns so the patterning mat will look similar but instead of having the pattern completed they'll have just the few first colors or shapes 
available and then they'll have to continue on the pattern on their own, which is like I said, a step up from just recreating. They'll have to extend the pattern that is on their patterning map. And after they've mastered that, the fun really, really starts where they can create their own patterns and you can use anything that you have in your classroom and have the kids make patterns with it. Some of my favorites are beads and pipe cleaners, mini erasers, these like stem builder things that my kids really, really enjoy. But you can use things you already have in your, in your classroom, square tiles, double-sided counters, pattern blocks, anything. The sky is the limit with making patterns. And it's something the kids really enjoy and they make patterns. They make patterns for the rest of the year. It's, it's, it's cute how much they like it. And as we move on, with knowing about patterns and understanding how patterns work, it really lays the foundation for our number system when they get to that. And even the bigger concept of patterns being a part of everyday life. So there's other ways that you can incorporate patterns into your classroom. If you use calendar map or digital calendar map, you can make each day be a different part of a pattern and then they can talk about it that way so they're getting lots of different exposure to patterns maybe even before you start the pattern unit they will have a familiarity with patterns. The kids might also start to realize that their day is a pattern, routine is a pattern, the way the day goes is a pattern which is really great especially for kids who have trauma knowing exactly what's going on and in their schedule can be really helpful for them to be able to be available for learning. And finally, morning meeting or circle time. A morning meeting greeting that I really enjoy uh, when we're doing patterns is called the make a pattern greeting. So I will start a pattern on the floor, for example, with bear counters. So it might be red, blue, red, blue, and then I'll give each student around the circle a red bear or a blue bear. And the person who starting the greeting is going to look at the pattern that we started on the floor and greet somebody who has the color of the bear that comes next. So if blue was the last one, they're looking for somebody that has a red bear to greet, and then the, the person who was greeted will put their bear down and then look for someone who has a blue bear to keep the pattern going for a greeting. And a fun activity that you can play is called Catch My Pattern. So you might do a pattern like clap, shoulder tap, clap, shoulder tap, and the kids will have to look to see the movements that you're doing and then try and catch your pattern or do the same thing as you do. To start off this game, I would have, I would be the one who's making the patterns and then eventually as the kids get better at patterns, then they can start to um, be the leader and we will all catch the students' patterns. So I hope you've gotten some ideas of how to incorporate patterns in your day and how to teach patterns. I will include the slides that I would use to teach patterns in the link in the description as well as some other um, math pattern centers that you might enjoy. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time.